Hey guys, DM Mike here for another episode of Link's Awakening. Today's episode is kind of special. We're not going to be spending any time on the overworld like we have been for the previous episodes. Today, we're actually going to be making a sort of different type of progress that's actually required to 100% the game. Now, it's not a true 100% because what I'm going to be doing in this episode you can take pretty far. There are varying levels of completion that you can do. I'm actually only going to be doing what's required for itemization, optimization. So this is the part of the game that I've been alluding to for a few episodes and I don't love it. I don't hate it, but it was included in the remake of Link's Awakening only. It is in place of the Photoshop that was in the not Photoshop, don't don't sue me, Adobe. The shop of photos from the original Zelda, or from from Link's Awakening DX, and they replaced it with this. So before we get started, though, I just wanted to give a quick reminder: if you're enjoying the content, please continue to like and comment. If you haven't subscribed and you're watching these videos, whether that's in the present or in the future, please go ahead and subscribe to follow along with the update update schedule and be on the lookout for more content. So without further ado, let's get started. This is going to be kind of a choppy episode just because of the way that I have to do it in order for it to make sense. So for those of you who have played Ocarina of Time, A Link Between Worlds, this is Dampe. And in this game, his role is a special function. So let's find out what this is all about. So I've already went ahead and pre-played a little bit of this part of the game just for completion's sake. It's going to be, it would be difficult to fit it all in one episode without it. So I'm going to go ahead and just give you a heads up that this is kind of like Mario Maker, where visiting Dompe's shack anytime after, I believe the first or second dungeon will give you the opportunity to come in here and complete challenges of designing your own dungeon. There are certain requirements and different hoops to jump through that give you different prizes. And we're going to be doing five of these challenges today. Three of them are for obtaining prizes. Two of them are just for completion's sake. You have to do certain ones to unlock others. So I went ahead and did a, a few of those already just to unlock the, the requisite ones that we need. So that way I'm not going to be sitting here and doing 15 of these. And these will be probably chopped up a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and do the very first dungeon as a kind of a demo. And then I'm thinking just to save time because I have to do five, that I'm going to just go ahead and cut ahead to the actual completed state. So the game starts you off with this one, Dungeon of Raging 101. What you're seeing on this sub screen are essentially the required rooms that they have you do. They'll usually start you with an entry room, it's the green triangle on the bottom left, and then the boss's room is obviously the nightmare icon. So there's multiple different rooms that you can put together in this one. I'll show you what that means. There's usually requirements on what they need you to do. Based on the icon, there might be an icon for a chest where you have to have a room that has a chest in it or a room that's got stairs or a key. And then you have to put those in a certain order in order to successfully complete the dungeon builder. So the dungeon for today that we're going to start with is fill up your hearts. This is a level one tier one dungeon indicated by the one shovel. We're actually going to be doing level two and three dungeons in here. So you'll get to see a little bit of each. So let's get started. So the reality of this attempt to be like Mario Maker is, I don't know. I don't personally care for this very much. I think that this, uh, I don't know. I, I just, I feel like the game itself really wanted to kind of hype this part up as something new and novel. But the reality is that this gets very tedious and I mean, in my opinion, I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer or anything, but in my experiences, this just becomes very samey. 
after a while you'll probably see what I'm talking about soon but the game gives you opportunities to build the dungeon however you want to as long as things don't clash with each other so the game gives you icons on what's going to be in the room the little chest icon is obviously a chest shocking the little stairs icon is stairs so when you start to play stuff it'll tell you kind of what the design of that room will be like it's got two entrances or exits this is for three this is for four obviously i think you guys can kind of put that together for yourselves so that's how you figure that out it's not really complicated nothing in here is you know really that difficult to understand but this is probably just going to be the one and only time playing through this that I'm going to showcase everything just by virtue of how long this can take. And I don't, I don't really want to spend a ton of time doing this. This is the part in the, in the game where it can just, it just feels like, why am I doing this? You know, obviously I'm doing this because I'm trying to obtain all the prizes. Now, when you successfully lock a room or link a room into another one, it shows up as blue. One of the things that you have to keep in mind is that you do eventually need to have a room in here with a boss in it. So for the sake of this one, um, let's do, let's do Moldorm for fun. But you're going to want to, I mean, you can mix up, you can, you can literally do whatever you want to in here. I recommend just doing whatever you think is fun, I guess. I don't really have any preference. You at least need to have a room, at the very least, that has one treasure chest in it because you have to have a key that lets you unlock the boss room. So just keep that in mind. This in and of itself, like I like the idea that the game designers are encouraging you to be creative. I like the idea that they want you to kind of experiment with all of the different things that you've picked up over the course of the game which these rooms that you that you have some of them are given to you by Dompe and some of them are picked up over the course of the game through different challenges or from the trendy game I know that I showed that off I believe I grabbed one of them is you can you can get chamber stones that way from different different types of games that you play, which is cool. I mean, if you enjoy that, then that's fine. I'm not trying to knock anybody's enjoyment of this. I just know that personally for me, the tedium of doing this over and over and over again isn't super fun. So I could get maybe why people wouldn't be huge fans of it. But hey, don't let me hold you back. If this is something that you enjoy, then by all means, being creative is fun. I just feel like my experience is playing something like Super Mario Maker were more fruitful. In this game, it just kind of feels like, what am I doing, right? And and sometimes the creation of the dungeons themselves, like I'm not very good at this. My dungeon that I just created is probably trash, but you know, in general, you just gotta do it, I guess. I'm just wondering, like I'm almost thinking like going through this, I might show the eventual design of what I'm trying to do and then maybe just show the prize because the reality of the situation is it, it is very much very samey not a lot is gonna happen in between the oh yeah, you know you can set those guys on fire not a lot is going to happen in between different takes to be completely honest we're really here for the prizes that's kind of the big thing that i'm after one thing of note that is cool in this game is, or in this kind of mini game suite, any sort of rupees that you get throughout the course of your exploration, Dompe does let you keep. So if you're low on rupees, this could potentially be a fruitful way to grab them. I'm not advocating for that, but I just know it's, it's, a, it's a possibility. So if that's what you're into, in some of these versions that I've played through, I was able to walk away with, you know, almost 200 a pop, which is kind of nice. So yeah, I mean, if, if you're low on rupees, this could potentially be a good way to get them. 
the main thing to be aware of here is that you want to try to navigate your way around and find the boss key. That's kind of the, uh, that's the obvious thing that you're looking for. And every other chest besides a boss key is going to either be rupees or a small key, depending upon what your needs are. So just keep that in mind. That's what I feel like kind of takes away from this is that there's not... So you get a prize for, for winning, which is nice. The prizes that we'll be obtaining here are are good. I mean, if you want to finish the game 100% and fill up your inventory, then you need to do all of this. But I don't know. In general, it just kind of feels like, cool, once you've done one. The challenges, I guess, are probably what throws me off the most is because I feel like there's a certain level of excitement when you first start it of like oh this is kind of new and enjoyable but as you get further along it's very repetitive and the challenges themselves aren't really difficult enough that playing through this will make you feel like it's validating your experience it just almost feels like a waste of time and i'm only saying that because it's been done better you know, the the Mario Maker elements of playing through your own levels and challenges that you make for yourself, I've gone, they can get pretty complex, but this game, it keeps the kid gloves on the whole time. There are some like gold tier, I believe that's what they are. I haven't played that part in a long time. There are some like gold tier dungeons in here that are like additional challenges, but I don't know. It doesn't do it for me. I was kind of dreading this part a little bit just because of how monotonous this can be. I'm only really doing this, if I'm being completely honest, for the prizes. So I think that's probably what I'm gonna do. Once you see me do this one time, there's no real sense in me prolonging this experience and showing you every completion that I could do, all that's essentially doing is, I mean, it's it's literally the same exact thing. So for the sake of viewership and not trying to bore you guys to death, I'm just gonna show this version of completion of me going through the actual dungeon itself, and then we'll come back and I will show the completed dungeon in terms of like the map layout. Which is unfortunate because it doesn't really show you anything. And then I'll just show you the, the prize that you get for completing such an arduous task. The prizes are good though, I'll give them that. But the reality is that I have to do five of these, most of which will be done off camera. And you know, as much as I would love to do five of these, I would be okay with uh, doing zero of these just in their current format. But once again, if this is something that you as a viewer enjoyed, then by all means, like, go for it. Like, that's, that's, that's awesome. You know, it's something that you enjoyed. I'm glad you did. I just think that this, this has an idea. I love the idea that they're trying to create something that's novel to, and that, that switch, I believe, is pretty useless because I don't think I have any crystal blocks that get raised or lowered in my creation. That's always that's also kind of a downfall. There's a challenge where they require you to have a certain amount of steps or stairs, staircases, sorry. And those staircases have to be linked, obviously, in order for you to progress. It wouldn't make sense otherwise. But that's kind of the only thing that's required. Like, I'm not trying to do like a real ingenious level design here. Like if I wanted to create a cohesive dungeon, then I guess I could sit here and do that. But I don't know who that's for. That would be, in and of itself, something that I wouldn't be interested in doing. Like, I love being creative. Don't get me don't get me wrong. Like, I obviously am a creative because I'm making content. But the creativity of this game, I guess, my interest is more in the realm of how I'm 
progressing and how I choose to do things instead of just like, hey, let's design dungeons. I mean, I'm sure that there's probably a YouTube channel out there somewhere that is dedicated to Link's Awakening dungeon making mastery. And for those people, more power to you. I think that's great. I'm sure that those dungeons are awesome and they're probably super challenging if you can like upload those to some sort of Nintendo server and do that. But this guy, not doing it. Not feeling it. So that challenge is complete. Oh, get out of here. So you get a secret seashell from this. I was going to put this in the collect-a-thon video, but I realized that doing so would be kind of excessive because of how long that's going to be. That episode is going to be tons of cuts and probably not really much any commentary to it because I'm just going to have to speed it all up because of how many things I have to collect. But I thought I'd get a couple of them out of the way. So we did get a heart container of that. That's pretty cool. So whenever you complete a challenge, Dompei will come up with a new one. There's certain that you have to unlock. There's prerequisites that unlock newer ones. So. That's all the tier one dungeons that are complete dungeon arrangements. The ones that we have to do. Okay, so I'm assuming these are like the ones where you can, yeah, you can do freeform stuff. So. There are dungeons that we have to do in order to get all of the prizes. So one of those is going to be this, Passageway Central. There is another called Heart Shortage. There's ones that will show up upon completion of the others. So I'm going to go ahead and just play through this. This isn't going to be something that you'll see without... Uh, I'm just going to show you the final result and then I'm going to show you the price. So. From here on out, it's just going to be multiple cuts just to kind of speed it up because we're already at 17 minutes and I don't want to keep you here forever. So we'll just show the prizes after I do that. Or maybe I'll just, I could speed it up, but I feel like it would take a lot of speeding up because I have to do four of these. So I think we'll just stick to maybe, maybe I'll, maybe I'll, I think I'll keep this in. I think I will keep in the design of the dungeon itself. And then I will, I'm not gonna include any sort of dungeon crawling cause that's very samey samey, but then I'll just include the reward. We'll speed this part up and we'll keep it going. So without further ado, let's hit it. All right, guys, we finished up Passageway Central. Let's find out what our prize is. We get a chamber stone. So doing Passageway Central actually isn't a way to get a legitimate prize that I want. However, 
doing Passageway Central is required in order to unlock some of the later options, I guess. So, got a couple more to do, or three more to do. Uh, this is Heart Shortage. The trick in this one is that you are limited to only three hearts. So, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and treat this the same exact way. I'm going to fast forward through all of this, and then I'll see you on the prize side. All right, guys, so we completed Heart Shortage. That was a bit of a doozy. It was very close to dying, actually. I had to burn a fairy. Speaking of fairies, that level in and of itself was kind of cheesed by the fact that there were a bunch of anti-fairies in there that if you have the boomerang, you can hit them and it gives you fairies. So not really as challenging as it could have been, but it is what it is. So that's three down. We got two to go. We get ourselves a, another chamber stone. And the real prize here is the final bottle. Oh? That's a nice prize. Yeah. So let's go ahead and move right along. Our next challenge is the sheath sword, which shows that the restriction here is that we can't use the sword throughout the course of this dungeon. So not a huge deal, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. So I'll catch you guys on the flip side. All right, guys, we finished the sheath sword. That was actually a little trickier than I was expecting it to be. I didn't realize how much I was taking the sword itself for granted, but there's a few tricky little puzzles in there that I had to wind up using bomb arrows to get around that I wasn't sure what other solution there would be. So not too bad. So let's find out what our prize is. Just another chamber stone. That's okay. And the hearts effect, I don't... Oh, okay. Well, apparently, if you're doing a low hearts run or something and you wanted to have some more stability and a little bit of a backup, then that would probably help. So that's good. All right. And we've got one final challenge to collect the final prize that I think should be opened up now. Yes. So, there is a final dungeon that we're going to be doing here called the Ticking Clock, and that will be the one that gets us our final prize. The restriction here is that you have to complete it in under five minutes. So let's go ahead and set that up, and then I will cut ahead to the prize. And then that will be a wrap for this episode, and we'll move on to the Collectathon next time. All right, guys, we finished the final challenge, the ticking clock. That was actually pretty stressful. Got near the end of it and finished it with about 30 seconds to spare because I made some mistakes, but I feel like my overall arrangement of it wasn't terrible, but it is what it is. That's the final puzzle that we actually have to do in terms of dungeon arrangement. So let's see what our final prize is before we wrap up this episode. I actually was pretty low on hearts too, so. Another chamber stone, surprising. Wasn't expecting to get that as a prize. We get the wall master's effect. Which is great. Not that I'm going to use that ever. So let's see what's left. 
That should pretty much do it. Looks like we took care of everything. That looks pretty good. All the stage three. The spawns on stage two, you don't really have to do if you want to get any prizes, but I believe that'll pretty much wrap it up. So, looking pretty good, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with me. I've been Dean Mike. Next time, we're going to go on a crazy collect-a-thon and wrap up the game before we finish the final boss. See you next time. Bye.